Hello gamers! In this video, I will be going over some of the basics of routers for the mod factorization. Here is a router, and they can do one thing at a time. Insert or extract. This is how they are crafted. And one thing that is extremely important is that they need a network. So if I insert, if I say insert, it will not do anything. It will not insert. There's nothing, nothing connecting this router to anything else. So it will not do anything. Okay. But once I put this chest right here, it will begin inserting stuff along these chests. And it will insert equally amongst all of these chests. So if I put 16 iron ore in here, it will put 4 into each of these chests. Okay. So the router is an okay tool by itself but where it, it gets most of its uses from is from the filters that you can add to it or upgrades and you can add as many upgrades as you want to a router and you add them by shift right clicking and you will see it will get an upgrade because of this little button right here and if you have multiple upgrades this is how you cycle through them so, I've put the upgrades in an order that I find the most useful. Start out with the ejector. I chose the ejector first because it gives the router multiple functions. So, if you're inserting with a router, then the ejector doesn't really have a use. But if you extract with it, then it can also be used as an insertion because it ejects into something as I'll demonstrate so I can put some random stuff into here it doesn't really matter what so let's see okay so mm, all right now, routers have a directional base, and this is what the ejector uses. So you can see, no matter how you place it, it'll always be the same. Now, you can eject it anywhere, top, bottom, north, south, east, west. Um, and the eject, if it's ejecting, it ejects it literally into that direction. If, if you eject it this way into a machine, then it goes into that slot of the machine no matter what. If you eject it down on top of a machine, then it goes into the top slot of a machine, such as if you eject it down into a furnace, it'll go into the top slot of a furnace if you eject it down on top of a furnace. If you eject it sideways, you won't be able to because this is the product slot. Okay, so I'll show you. Extract, and it ejects upward as you see. You can see it working like that. Okay, the ejector is made like this. It's a pretty simple. It's a pretty simple uh, recipe, um, not too difficult, which is another reason why it makes it incredibly useful. And pipes. Let's see. Let's get a gold pipe. And let's eject it to the south. 
So the router cannot eject straight into a pipe, which is good to know. Let's get a wooden pipe and see if we can extract it that way. Nope. It still will not eject into a pipe. So, let's get a redstone engine or an engine in general. Let's get a sterling engine. To see if we can get a redstone torch. Let's get a little coal. Coal in here, put the torch down. Let's see. Okay. So you can pump things out using a wooden pipe and an engine. But it will not eject into a pipe. So it would be nice. So if by chance the mod author Neptune Pink happens to watch this. It'd be nice if it would eject straight into a pipe without having to extract it using an engine. That'd be really nice. Provide it with a lot more function, an easier sorting system, etc. etc. Now, the machine filter. Okay. This allows you to choose exactly what you want to do. So you see how it it has a bunch of stuff like the crystallizer it detects the crystallizer over here but it's not in the network so you can't do anything with it it has to be in the network for it to actually do something with it so for instance the furnace if i don't want to put anything in these but i want to smelt some ore for instance so got some gold ore. So I want to insert it into this furnace and it will not distribute equally among this. It will instead go straight into here. But if there's multiple furnaces after I update it add more ore it will distribute it equally among the furnaces. So you can choose a specific machine, but it will distribute it equally amongst the machines. Okay. But only the machines that it wants. Or if you put a visit near, it will only do an adjacent. So I'll only put it into this one, not into these, even if it's cleared. See? I'll show you again. Just to double check. See, it won't put it into these because it's on visit near, which means adjacent. Okay. Now, the machine filter is crafted like this, and it requires a hard to get item called the logic matrix identifier. Now, to get one of these, you have to start by crafting an Imperium drop, like this. And it's a temporary recipe, so it may be changed. Then, using stone, an Imperium drop, and a water bottle, you put it in a crystallizer, power it with a furnace heater and all that, and you'll get a logic matrix. Next is the difficult part. You actually have to go and find a dungeon that has a chest with the logic programmer inside of it. Now hopefully in the future this gets changed and it becomes craftable so that these are more readily available, but for now they're just in dungeons. After you get lucky and you find a matrix programmer or it gets changed, you get your logic matrix the spider eye and your programmer to get an identifier and it can be crafted like this 
in any of these three three rows, but it has to be in this order, as you can see. Okay. Next is the item filter, and it can sort whatever items I want. I'll show you. And so, since there's already iron in here, I don't want refined iron, I just want regular iron. So, if I distribute this iron equally or haphazardly through this, it will, as you can see, extract only the iron ore out, not the iron ingots. I also have an ejector module in here to eject it downward into the furnace to show you that it's only ejecting the iron ore. Okay, the item filter again, it requires a matrix identifier and this recipe. So, the next one is bandwidth. It moves whole stacks at a time. So this is incredibly useful, especially if you're trying to move large amounts of material at a time. Just extract it, boom, you get whole stacks at a time. And most of these filters do better together. So like, you can see it kind of flickering back and forth. That's because it's extracting it goes this one, this one, this one, this one, and it goes back again. So it's actually extracting and putting it back and forth rapidly. So you see, that's what it's doing. And it's crafted like this, once again. Next is the thoroughness upgrade. And what this does is basically it will completely fill a machine before it moves on. So you see it put all the whole stack into there but it didn't put any, any into these. So it will completely fill a machine until and then it will move on to the next one. So um, and machines are based on if they have an inventory slot. So a diamond chest is a machine but with the thoroughness upgrade it will fill every single one of these slots fully until it moves on to the next machine so just be wary of that it's crafted like this this is one of the easier recipes and then speed boost so I don't have anything here because I actually have a test after I show you what, how it's crafted. So, I don't actually know this myself, but I set up a little task going on. So, I have an equal number of pipes going to each side. It is an even number, so I had to kind of wiggle it around a little bit. So, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and then one, two, three, four five six seven eight nine okay so there's nine pipes going in each direction and there's an empty chest on each side and there's two extractor there's two routers sorry on each side but these these two on each side are exactly the same it's these two that we're testing I do have it I do have a machine filter because I do have copper chests right here because I didn't put furnaces because you can't see them so I just put a copper chest just to complete the network and basically we're gonna have a race and we're gonna see which one lands in this furnace and they all have they all have coal in them and all that so so we'll check through the speed boost bandwidth I just have whole stacks so you might as well just move the whole thing 
furnace speed boost. Okay. So let's go check this one. And we will start. Okay. So this is full. And we will start now. And this is why I have the mining bags. This isn't the most efficient way, but that's the only way I could really think of because we can't use redstone. There was no way to use pistons to move it. There was no way. I That was the only way I could figure out how to do it. I could have used water or something to flow all the materials down into the pipe, but I just have an excess right now. So let's see. We can already tell this side is further along, and some of those aren't like done because they might have stuff in them or something because I tried testing it before just to make sure everything was okay and stuff like that so so we can see Okay, so this one is definitely a lot farther along, as you can see. So they're going along. And I could have, I tried attaching it both, but then it only filled up. Like I tried attaching diamond chests all the way across and just putting a bunch of stacks in there all at once, but then it only completed one side at a time, which didn't work. So I had to use pipes. But now that it's moving, Ah, uh, so there is not coal in some of these. There is coal further down, however. That was strange. I did use routers to fill some of these, and I've kind of tested it and tried to 
play with it. It's kind of messed up a couple times, so that's why it's not completely perfect. It's actually very difficult. But you can tell how it processes it. This one just goes more rapidly because this speed boost upgrade, basically what it does is it removes the processing time for um, like looking for a machine. So as you can see, you can just watch how this one is just moving along. It's already done and the other one slowly kind of goes through it. So you can see this one's a lot further along. So it does increase the speed, but if you have a small system, there's not really much of a need for it, even though it is cheap. It is whatever you want. I mean, if you have some gigantic furnace thing and you want it running in as fast as possible, I would suggest it. But something small, four or five chests, it's not really that big of a deal. It doesn't take long. If it's a second between each, you're, only lo you're not losing very much, but it's not even that much time. It's probably like a quarter of a time for processing speed between each. So it takes a second to process all of these. So, I mean, you're not really losing much time. But a quarter of a second for all of those, is it adds up to be a lot. So that's pretty much routers and what you can do with them there is a little nice thing about them you can add them together pretty much so you can have one extract something and then eject it into this one and then it can insert into something so that's a really cool functionality of them but maybe in the future we can have another upgrade that lets, a, lets routers be able to say move things over like through air blocks instead of or make it like this fur router move into these furnaces even though it's not touching them because it can detect it can detect like basically everything here but it can't do anything with it. See? Like, it's detecting all the way over here, but it can't do anything with it. So, an upgrade like that would be nice. And, like, use a couple more Ender Pearls or something like that for the teleporting function would be really cool and actually really helpful. Um,. Maybe an upgrade for a router to do both functions, both insert and extract. So, like, it can extract something and insert it away. And if I had the air block upgrade, it'd be great for sorting. Like, things like that, I think, would greatly increase the amount routers could do. And you could offset it by changing the price of the upgrades. So, like, like they're not super expensive like almost impossible to get like this but they're expensive enough to cost something and not be overpowered but that's just my thoughts I think routers are awesome they're really cool to use I have a couple videos as you can see over there that's some of the stuff I've done with them um, to use the factorization 300% to get it using all the materials up to the crystallizer. Um, it's a really neat mod and the routers are really awesome, but it does take a lot to be able to do relatively simple things. So some further upgrades would be nice and a little bit more functionality or at least a decrease in cost 
if there's no more function. So that's all I have for basics on routers and some of my opinions. I thank you all for watching and I hope you have a good day.